Hi, I'm Mike with RF Safe. If you're new to us, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons at the bottom of the video. If you're a return visitor, welcome back. Uh, this is another in a series of videos where we cover the latest news and studies on cell phone radiation. According to a recent bombshell report by the Chicago Tribune, Certain Apple and Samsung cell phones are emitting RF radiation at much higher levels than the FCC allows. The report demonstrates that the world's most popular smartphones, operating in the 3G and 4G bands, have the potential to exceed the FCC safe limits by up to 500%. This 500% increase occurred with a measurement only three millimeters closer than the FCC's minimum separation distance of five millimeters. Now, smartphone manufacturers are required to abide by the FCC guidelines regarding radio frequency radiation absorption by the body. The current measurement used to determine the safety limit is known as the specific absorption rate, or SAR for short. According to the Tribune's report, the FCC has set the limit at 1.6 watts per kilogram averaged over one gram of tissue. The FCC states that this limit is well below that at which laboratory testing indicates adverse health effects could occur. <laughs> now at this point, I need to take a moment to address this statement because it is simply not true. In fact, it is an outright lie. In what may be the most significantly underreported story in history, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in 1999 nominated a very important radio frequency radiation study to the National Toxicology Program. This study was one of the largest rodent studies ever done, with a combined 16 years of planning and research. This most recent National Toxicology Program study proves there is a definitive link between cell phone level radiation at non-thermal levels of exposure and cancer. On November 9, 2018, the National Institutes of Health National Toxicology Program website released final reports from their rat and mouse studies, as well as a newly updated fact sheet, citing clear evidence of cancer from exposure to cell phone level radiation. The National Toxicology Program studies found that exposure to radio frequency radiation similar to what is experienced by billions of consumers on their smartphones on GSM and CDMA networks worldwide, was associated with clear evidence of malignant schwannoma tumors in the hearts of male rats, as well as some evidence of malignant glioma tumors in the brains of male rats. Finally, some evidence of uh, pheochromocytoma tumors in the adrenal glands of male rats was found. Ronald Melnick, PhD, who led the design of the National Toxicology Program study in his 28-year career as a scientist at the National Toxicology Program, said an important lesson that should be learned from this is we can no longer assume any current or future wireless technology is safe. He also stated the NTP studies in experimental animals were designed to test the long-held assumption that radio frequency radiation at seemingly low non-thermal exposure intensities could not cause harmful health effects. It failed the test. Cell phone radiation clearly caused cancer in these animals. Anthony Miller, MD, University of Toronto, School of Public Health, Professor Emeritus said, this animal evidence, together with the extensive human evidence, coupled with the rising incidence of brain cancers in young people in the U.S., conclusively confirms that radio frequency radiation is a Category 1 human carcinogen. Now, for a phone to receive approval from the FCC, it must never exceed the minimum SAR level, but the Tribune's investigation showed that a handful of popular models do just that. The Tribune's investigation tested 11 different models, four iPhone models, the 7, 8, 8 Plus, and 10, three Samsung Galaxy phones, the S8, S9, and J3, three Motorola's, the E5, E5 Play, and G6 Play, and a Blue Vivo 5 Mini. The phones were tested by RF Exposure Lab, which is an FCC-accredited laboratory in San Marcos, California. The investigators placed smartphones within two 5, 10, or 15 millimeters of a simulated body, 
which is a mix of sugar, water, and salt, and measured the levels of exposure with a series of probes. The two millimeter distance was chosen by the Tribune to simulate real world proximity to a cell phone. Two millimeters accounted for undergarments and uh, pocket material. The five through 15 millimeter tests were done to simulate the exact tests done by the manufacturers themselves. Making a special note, uh, not all manufacturers test at the same distance. For example, Apple tests at five millimeters and Samsung tests at 15 in many cases, thus accounting for Samsung's lower radiation levels. The results show that iPhone 7 radio frequency absorption levels were among the very worst offenders with an SAR level of almost two to four times higher than the safety limit when tested two millimeters from the body. The three Samsung Galaxy models also showed higher absorption at the same distance with the Galaxy S8 topping out with a reading of 8.22, which is five times higher than the current standard. The report states that the FCC will now conduct its own tests over the coming months, but they told the Tribune that the testing was, quote, not as comprehensive, unquote, as those usually filed for official compliance reports. So where does that leave us? It should leave everyone very concerned. With clear evidence, strangely unreported in the mainstream media, that a link between cell phone radiation and cancer exists, cell phone manufacturers clearly have a lot to answer for. The time has come, and some would say the time has long since passed, for complete transparency regarding the clear and present danger that cell phone radiation poses to every human being who uses one. Children are especially vulnerable as their skulls and brains are not yet fully developed. Now, can we afford to continue to pretend to find comfort in the propaganda the cell phone manufacturers are providing the media stating, cell phone radiation poses no human health risk? <laughs> they know better than that. If you look in your phone's instructions, you'll find, usually buried very deeply within, the warning that you should keep your cell phone a minimum, minimum of five to 15 millimeters away from your body with the actual distance depending on the manufacturer. Isn't this a tacit admission that they clearly understand that cell phone radiation is in fact dangerous? Why do they still test their phones with the testing equipment placed at various distances from the phone in order to meet the FCC limits instead of pressed right up against the phone to represent the way that almost everyone holds their cell phone right against their head. Now I understand that this limit was set at a time when uh, cell phones were still a new and exciting technology and people generally kept their phones in very large belt worn holsters attached to their hips uh, because of course they couldn't fit those big phones into their pockets at all. This accounts for the unrealistic current testing distances. By not changing these outdated limits and continuing to test these phones at what are now meaningless distances, both the FCC and the cell phone manufacturers are putting each and every one of us directly in harm's way. I urge you to make sure that you are protecting yourselves and your loved ones from the dangerous effects of cell phone radiation. Even though RF Safe makes the world's best anti-radiation cases, there's no substitute for distance. RF Safe's case is extremely important when the critical safety distance cannot be achieved. One of the most effective ways to stay safe is to use the speakerphone function on your phone whenever you possibly can. If you must keep your call private, use an air tube headset to keep the radiation from reaching your brain through your ear canal. In closing, please remember to hit the notification button to be sure you don't miss out on any new videos, news, or other important information. Also, remember to visit us at rfsafe.com as well as our other social media outlets, such as Facebook and Twitter. Be sure to check back often so you and your loved ones can learn how to reduce excessive exposure to cell phone radiation. More videos are coming soon. Thank you very much for watching.